What gets better with inflation? Balloons? Bubbles? My neighbour's dog's football collection? Aside from these rare examples, inflation drives up prices, kills purchasing power and destroys savings. Some pundits even predict civil unrest if things get much worse. It's already happening in certain countries. But what if I told you that one well-known investor not only predicted inflation two years ago, but possesses what Liam Neeson might refer to as a very particular set of skills? Inflation might be 10% so far in 2022, but how much interest did Michael Burry make last year on his shares in Core Civic? He bought 555,000 shares for just under four and a half million dollars and in the second half of 2021 sold them for 6.6 .6 million. That's a 45% return on investment. Diesel has increased in price 20% per gallon this year, but how much interest has Michael Burry made on his shares in Bristol Myers Squibb? Well, the three million shares that he purchased for 18.7 million dollars last year are now worth a cool 22.848 million dollars. That's a 22.1% gain without even factoring in the quarterly dividend of 54 cents, which provides an additional 2.83% return. What about General Dynamics Aerospace Corporation? I mean, surely that wasn't worth purchasing, was it? Well, Burry bought 80,000 shares for $16.678 million, which have risen to be worth $19.139 million, which is a 14.7% increase. That's before factoring in the $5 per share annual dividend. Designer Brands? Burry bought 1.2 million shares for an average of $5.33 each throughout 2020. The chair price chart for Designer Brands reveals that the stock price reached $20 in the first quarter of 2021. We'll never know exactly when Burry sold, but it's safe to say that he did well from this trade. So when the cost of living rises, it helps to look at someone who predicted this inflationary uptick and how he is adapting his investment strategy. I'm not saying necessarily copy it, but there are a lot of useful insights to glean, and that's what we're going to focus on. So five tips on how to invest despite inflation. Number one, choose inflation-proof sectors. It's interesting, when we look at Burry's portfolio allocation over the past few years, to see how the sums invested in different sectors vary over time. He spent more on consumer discretionary companies back in 2018 and 2019, and now communications sector investments seem to have displaced those investments. Nextstar and Discovery are poised to make a lot of money during the 2022 midterm elections from advertising, and they're also high highly undervalued compared to industry peers. I did a couple of videos recently which looked in detail at each of the companies in Burry's most recent 13F filing. As a side note, some general advice I would give to anyone in Europe is just to own some dollars. Even though inflation is ravaging most economies, rising interest rates mean that the dollar's rise is outpacing that of other currencies, especially emerging markets whose debts are denominated in dollars. But as those interest rates tick higher, more capital flows back to the US, as well as retreating away from Europe due to conflict and war anyway. Let's use an example. Let's imagine that a German investor buys a house in Texas in March 2020 for a million dollars. He then sells it in June 2021 for $1.2 million. He does this because the market goes up. However, because of foreign exchange fluctuations at the time of the sale, he needs more euros to buy the same number of dollars, which means that when he changes his sale proceeds back to his own currency, he'll have an extra 10% profit or so from the home sale. It's just an example. Now, when talking about inflation-proof sectors, we conclude that those companies which meet Burry's requirements have pricing power. They're able to pass on the increased costs of doing business during periods of inflation to their customers without risking losing those customers. And the reason for this is that the customers really have no viable alternative. If the service or offering that you sell to customers is unique and can be used over and over, whether that's a pharmaceutical product, a website which enables secure, predictable holiday reservations, cable news, IT subscriptions, or even health insurance, the costs to competitors of establishing a rival business aimed at taking market share away from you are so high in terms of research and development, client acquisition, software programming or staffing, building a network containing a critical mass of customers, etc, 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 that it simply isn't worth it for them to attempt to do it, which is why so few bother in the first place. Two, anticipate market trends. Due to a perfect storm of factors, energy prices have soared over the past year. That's a quote from Eric Dighton, President and Managing Director of the Wealth Alliance, a registered investment advisory firm in Melville, New York. In the mind of Dighton, a major factor in that perfect storm is climate change and the global response to it, but supply chain issues, labor shortages, the war in Ukraine, and COVID are all fueling higher energy prices 
as well. The result, he says, is that oil and gas producers are making record profits and their stocks have been market leaders. After years of lacklustre sales, companies that make electric vehicles or EVs are doing well. New car sales of electric vehicles in the second quarter of 2022 climbed 13% over the first quarter. EV sales hit a new record, one potentially driven by motorists weary of high gas prices. More cars would have probably been sold, however, if electric vehicle manufacturers weren't struggling with shortages of semiconductors, which of course are vital components of an electric vehicle. However, if inflation continues to push gas prices up, expect demand for electric vehicles to continue to rise, as well as demand for raw materials used in their manufacture, which includes copper and cobalt. You have a very nice haircut. Did you do it yourself? <laughs> what? No. Food prices have risen over 10% over the last year because of a variety of factors, many of the same ones that have affected energy prices. Russia and Ukraine account for 30% of global wheat production, as we've discussed before. The war has led to a large reduction in output and corresponding leaps in prices. As a result, many food producers have benefited from rising prices. Collectibles like fine art, wine, and vintage automobiles have also benefited from inflationary periods of time as the dollar loses purchasing power. The trading platform Masterworks crunched the numbers from the last major inflationary period, which was between 1973 and 1981. They concluded that during this time, the value of an investment in art went up more than the value of gold. Three, pinpoint technological advancement. Bury has held a number of investments over the course of the last several years in companies who are advancing the economy by pursuing innovation and by using or developing new technologies. We can look no further than Murakami, a Japanese screen printing company. Just look at how much the share price jumped after Burry's purchase. He finds niche markets which have a powerful moat because there is not a great deal of competition. Even when he invested in military and satellite technology by buying shares in companies such as Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Maxar, and others, he was adopting the same philosophy. As global economies rebound from the pandemic and more stringent climate targets come into effect, because of governments. Countries' energy demands are undergoing a shift in focus, but natural gas remains a steady source that's heralded as a key transitional fluid for the green future. Floating liquefied natural gas platforms are expected to see a rise in popularity. While the pandemic caused a collapse in demand that had ripple effects on market prices, stabilizing economies and the progression of liquefied natural gas projects mean that the industry will see a bumper year over 2022 with burgeoning Asian demand driving the heart of growth. Four, explore insurance and health and health insurance. One of the most resilient types of businesses to be involved in during times of recession is insurance. Now, this is not a popular investment choice for everyone, especially for instance, within Islamic populations, as this preacher explains. Insurance in general, whether it's property insurance, whether it is life insurance, whether it is car insurance, all of these fall under the category of haram, major sin, because it involves two major sins, gambling and interest. Ethical objections aside, the reasons why people invest include strong growth projections, marketable services, and rapid revenue gains. As Warren Buffett says, a business doesn't care how much you pay for it, but it will respond based on fundamentals and based on cash flow. This chart shows the number of people taking out health insurance in the United States increased year over year and is continuing to increase. Health insurance companies like Cigna, for instance, which we reviewed recently in Boris 13F video, enjoy huge coverage. They upsell to their massive existing client base. They offer them higher margin oncology and rare disease therapies. They're expecting $8 billion of cash flow from operations, and they're expecting to deploy $7 billion in repurchasing shares. It's important to try and buy growing businesses which offer competitive dividends and which have a proven track record of share buybacks. The rising population in the United States will also lead to more consumers using Cigna's services. The average annual growth rate of the United States population is around 0.9%. So in the long run, this will allow Cigna to have more customers every year and more people employed that will get Cigna services through their employer. Finally, number five, source 
the recovery. Michael Burry has in the past invested in real estate investment trusts and these have historically outperformed the broader stock market during periods of high inflation. Back in 2016 Michael Burry invested in Nextpoint Residential, in 2019 he invested in Corepoint Lodging. What other companies has he invested in that are real estate investment trusts or REITs? Well, how about Erstat Biddle Properties, which operates as a REIT? It owns or has equity interests in 77 properties with a total of about 5.3 million square feet. The properties are shopping centers anchored by grocery stores, drug stores or pharmacies and wholesale clubs. The locations of these shopping centers are in affluent suburbs of the New York City metro area. Erstat Biddle focuses on acquiring properties with a minimum of 10,000 square feet and a worth of at least $5 million. Another company that Burry invested in that's now looking fairly attractive and happens to own a sizable portfolio of open air shopping centers is RPT Realty. Without getting granular and into the fine details about each one of these four companies, which have relatively stable dividend yields, by the way, it's worth noting that these are value investments where over the long term, you'll hardly lose money. You'll expose to the American economy, and if the value unlocking happens quickly, then you might also see higher stock prices over the next year or two, which would give you good returns. If that doesn't happen, you still get the good 5 or 6 or 7% yield. So yes, they're quite dull businesses, but in many ways that makes them perfect and a perfect fit for value investors. Why is that? Well, firstly, real estate investment trust balance sheets are the strongest ever. They've got low leverage, long debt maturities, and the impact of interest rate rises on the debt will not be significant as a result. Second, interest rates have been rising because of the high inflation, which benefits these companies by growing their rents and property values, all while also inflating their debt away. Finally, number three, the positive impact of inflation is a lot greater than the negative impact of rising rates because it impacts 100% of the balance sheet, not just the debt. So that's typically just around 30% of it. So this explains why real estate investment trusts historically outperform during times of rising interest rates and especially when inflation is high. Let's wrap this up with a few concluding remarks. In Berkshire Hathaway's 2009 annual meeting, Warren Buffett famously stated that the best protection against inflation is your own earning power. And while this pumps us all up and makes us feel good, what does it mean? He's repeated this statement in various ways over the years, saying that the best investment that you can possibly make is in yourself. And there will be those who say, well, Warren Buffett hardly even pays himself a salary. Why would he talk about investing in yourself? But if you think about it, his main attribute, if you will, or one of the strong ones, is his ability to study in detail information about companies. And while you might argue that's not a job, he was CEO of Berkshire Hathaway and the skill set that he developed and deployed over the years enabled Berkshire to produce outsized returns for shareholders during virtually every possible phase of the economic cycle that you can imagine. So investing in your own skill sets in order to boost your earning power is one surefire way of protecting yourself against the ravages of inflation. You have to increase your income in order to nullify any negative impact that inflation would otherwise have on your quality of life. That might involve starting a business, developing a skill, learning programming, writing a book, tutoring, virtual coaching, or selling items that you no longer need. The point is, unleashing your own productive capacities as an individual is the best way to mitigate the prospect of shortages and it enables you to use your own agency to overcome the gloomy forecasts of war and privation so that you don't find yourself wondering if a recession is guaranteed or not. It doesn't have to be for you because you can take inventory of your own skills and fashion to someone's problem a solution that brings you a return. That's what entrepreneurs do. But even if entrepreneurialism isn't your forte and you may consider your talents and interests lean more strongly towards studying companies and investing, well, the reason why investing is so powerful is it enables you to create additional sources of revenue which can help you during times of uncertainty. For instance, if you can't work due to medical problems or age. I just hope that these thoughts have been useful to you. If they haven't, I'm sorry, my videos are a little rough and ready here, but it's because the main goal is to increase the output of useful information. So even if there's only been one thing that I've said during this entire video that was worth listening to and has made a positive difference to the investing journey of even one person, then I consider it to be a huge success. So to sum up, it's been an honor and delight to speak to you. I wish you a lovely, pleasant evening and week. I hope that you can tune in again. I hope that we can meet again soon. And I wish you every success on your investing journey. I hope that you can use some of these tools and tips to move you forward as you
go through life and invest. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Which one of these strategies are you going to implement? Which is your favorite one? Hit me up in the comments below and I will see you soon. Have a great day. All the best.